So assigning accounts receivable. This is secured borrowing. So secured borrowing, what does that mean? You take out a mortgage uh, on a house, the bank loans you money, the house is collateral for that loan. If you don't pay the loan, the bank gets the house. Uh, this is the same uh, principle involved here, except the company is using their accounts receivable as collateral for a loan. So the bank loans the money, the accounts receivable are collateral, and uh, if the company doesn't pay the loan, the bank gets the receivables. Obviously, they'd rather collect the loan. Um, so um, accounts receivable will stay on the company's balance sheet here. Uh, unlike the factoring where they have actually sold the receivables, the receivables come off the books. Um, and I guess the easiest thing is to just look at a simple problem. We can look at brief exercise 7-8 here. And so to see how this works, um, you've got the Chung Company assigns accounts receivable to the Seneca Bank as collateral. The finance charge is 2% of the receivables. Um, and the interest rate on the note is 9%. So when the loan is taken out, um, Chung Company has a note payable of the 750, okay, because the, the, the note is 750, and notice that they've assigned accounts receivable of a million. Um, and the finance charge is 2% of the accounts receivable, so this is your finance charge of 2% times the million, and then the company gets the cash of 730 up front. Um, to work with. So um, that's a fairly simple example of this and um, if you want to see a more complicated one we can look at problem 710 and you know usually the the company will continue to collect the receivables but there are arrangements where the bank would actually collect the receivables. Uh, in one in the first case the, the uh, customers don't need to be notified because they just send their payments as usual, but if the bank's going to be collected, collecting them, then the, um, obviously the customers have to be notified to pay the bank. Um, so in this problem, um, and I, I want to reassure you on both the notes payable and this, the problem level problems do not show up on any of the exams. This is just to get you to see you know, ready for what you might be exposed to later on. Uh, on the exams, I try to keep things a lot more straightforward, not this complicated. But these are good for you. Okay. Um, so, in this one, the Salem company finances the, some of their operations using accounts receivables. Um, and so on 7 1, they assigned a certain amount, you know, 150. The finance company advances 80% to them. And think about this in terms of a mortgage. If you have a $100,000 condo, the bank is not going to lend you $100,000. They might lend you $70,000 or $80,000, but not $100,000. Same deal here. If you're putting up the collateral, the bank wants the collateral to be more than the loan because that just gives them a little buffer. Um, okay, so they're loaning 80% of the accounts assigned, and uh, then there's a finance charge of 1.5% of the total accounts assigned. So you have, with the problems like this, you have to go over and say, okay, 150 were assigned, 80% of that was advanced, the finance charge is the amount of, you know, 0.005 of the amount advanced, so that's your July finance charge. So then you can make your um, journal entries. You get the note payable that's 120, there's the 750, and they get the cash of this. At the end of the month, they, they've collected some of the receivables, of 80,000, and so they pay off some of the note, um, they reduce their accounts receivable. Okay, and then, um, so now they only have 70,000 assigned because 80,000 have been paid off, so there's their finance charge and so forth. So uh, you can see the problems do get a bit more complicated on this. Um, okay, so the difference between assigning and pledging uh, in most problems, all of the um, all of the receivables will be assigned, um, and if they're assigned, there's no specific accounting for that. Um, you just record the loan and disclose in the notes and everything. 
Uh, but if you assign only part of your receivables, then there obviously has to be a separate ledger account. Um, okay, so the costs of borrowing using receivables will generally be a little bit higher than other forms of financing, just because there's the risk of non-collection involved. Um, if you've got a house as collateral, that just kind of sits there. Receivables, um, you know, some of those just might not ever uh, be collected. Okay, what else do we need to know about assigning receivables? Um, assigning usually refers to specific receivables assigned and pledging. It's kind of all of your receivables in general. Uh, just, I'm not going to ask you terminology like that, but it's, it's probably good to know. Okay, um, so I'm going to do a separate, um, separate video on, you know, kind of the difference between the secured borrowing and the factoring.